Welcome to the new Leaders in Security interview series by the International Security Journal. I'm Philip Ingram, your host, and today I'm talking to James Gilding, who's the Managing Director of Cleaning and Environmental Services with Mighty PLC. He and his team are leading much of the support, including security support, to the new Dragon's Heart Hospital at the Principality Stadium in Cardiff. This is part of the Nightingale Field Hospital series that is currently opening. Now, for the people that are watching this out there, can you explain a little bit about who you are, um, where you fit into Mighty, and where Mighty fits into this fantastic Nightingale Hospital um, project? Sure, no problem. So uh, I've been with Mighty for uh, 17 years now um, and uh, grew up in the security business. Um, Mighty is the leading FM provider for the UK. So the benefit that gives us is uh, scale, uh, depth, uh, capability, reach, um, and you know, 55,000 uh, people that can add value when the chips are down and, and we need to support projects. We started actually with um, uh, technical services support at the Excel uh, of Nightingale, um, and I think uh, that was a very successful uh, mobilisation. Um, I think that was around nine days, as, as I'm sure you're aware from the press there. Um, and so we recently met with the team at uh, Wales um, to talk about principality. Um, it was a very uh, fast uh, burn, very quick requirement to to turn that around. Um, and I think our positive approach, can-do attitude, and make sure we got the job done was the reason we were, were uh, quickly appointed. And, and the, the pressure was that needed to be a same-day uh, decision, so that, that's exactly what was done. Um, now, I understand this Nightingale Hospital is slightly different to the others in that it's tented, but inside the Principality Stadium. Um, how long has it taken you to get it up, and is it up and running now? The facility is a mix of service requirements. Um, there are some tented requirements within the principality, um, but they also are using the hospitality suites as well um, to, to great effect. I have to say the, the transformation from an arena with hospitality to what looks like a working hospital, uh, a clinical level, uh, is, in, is incredible and has been, uh, you know, we've been very proud to be part of that. Uh, just to be clear, we're not, um, uh, if you like, the principal contractor, we're not in charge of the the build, our job is the, the soft services around us, as you pointed out, security, uh, uh, cleaning, uh, housekeeping, catering, uh, portering, and then you've got stewarding, which we would link into that uh, security piece. So all of the, the soft services as these projects uh, develop will be asked to help out in other areas. So supply chain's been really important to, to us as well within Mighty, uh, where we've, we've been able to add some value in that regard. Um, so what are the challenges that uh, you've had to overcome to bring these soft services, which are often the more complex side of uh, putting something, uh, a physical structure together? So I think the, ch the challenges were having to create a specification that was specific to that environment at pace, meaning, you know, within, within, that, within hours, within days, um, and, then, and then agreeing that. So the communication with the client is really important. We're having to make decisions. So from a uh, starting point uh, we had to have services uh, trained staff uh, with the right um, uniform PPE skill set uh, available to work within a five-day window so that that presented a huge challenge in itself and getting the right people um, through the door uh, to the right accredited standards of, of uh, screening vetting training etc was something that you had to work backwards from so if you said day five was go live um, you needed people in training by day three, really. Yeah. You, you, you've got some very short windows there. So the challenges were making sure we had the right people. Uh, the challenges were making sure we had a management team in place on the ground to deliver that. Um, I talked to you a little while ago about the, um, the size and scale of Mighty. So day one, the meeting was seven people at that meeting to discuss and agree how we would map that out and deliver it. Day two, there were 15 uh, of, of the management team, senior uh, middle management, helping to, to drive it. By day three, there were 35 people on the ground from MIT, loads of stuff happening. And really, we couldn't have done it any slower than that to have achieved the, the task that we were set by the trust. 
Well, I've, you know, I find it fascinating. The press jumped up and down as to how fantastic it was that the Chinese built a thousand bed hospital in seven days. And, and mm. we built a 4,000 bed hospital in uh, XL in nine days. And you're, you're um, helping as part of the project team uh, of a 2,000 bed hospital. And that's been produced in a very, very short period of time as well. Um, are, there, are there any lessons that you've brought out from you know, coming into this major project that you think could be applicable across other projects of similar skills or to other Nightingale hospitals? So for me, those lessons are, uh, you know, um, these aren't in any particular order, but be brave, be, be brave and be bold in your decision making because um, when, when the chips are down and the country needs support, you'll be amazed at what people will do to help and, and the way that people will, will flex to support. So um, let's talk about who that is that <clears throat> we need to be brave with. So we needed a large contingent of staff immediately. Um, we committed to make sure that would happen. Um, we weren't quite sure where we would get them all from, but we knew that we had that power and, and passion to make it happen. And people not only wanted to have a job, and obviously there's some tough times out there for people, whether that's, um, the roles have been made redundant or people uh, uh, are unemployed at the moment. But it wasn't about um, necessarily the earning potential of the role. It was that the role meant they could contribute towards mm. the, against uh, the virus. And we saw that. And we've, the quality of people that have come to support us has been incredible. So be brave around believing people will come and support um, on, these, on these key projects. The supply chain, our partners... There is, there is a shortage of supplies out there, as we, as we know. And it's, it's things that you wouldn't even be aware of, you know, cleaning materials and soaps. Are, 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 there's the volumes of those have increased exponentially. And it's making sure that those supplies are in place, on site, on time. Um, and suppliers, because of it being a Nightingale project, you know, they just dropped everything, threw everything out of that to support us. Mm. Um, and we're very flexible around making that happen. Um, so I think it's reach out and, 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 and ask uh, people to help and support. And then uh, for this particular project, one of our challenges of social distancing is really, really difficult to keep that up when you've got people together for days on end. Um, the boring stuff of washing your hands, uh, uh, coughing into a, a, a cloth or into your elbow, um, keeping two metres apart. It's so important and it, and it cannot be ever anywhere than other at the forefront of your mind. So um, you would have seen, if you'd have seen our, our training and our interviewing, massive rooms, 600 person conference rooms with 30, 40 people in yeah. um, time to make sure that we had plenty of space um, and that worked really well for us. Uh, again, one of our first challenges was finding a hotel that was open to host <laughs> these things in. But again, people stepped forward, hotels stepped forward and said, yeah, we'll open up for you, no, no problem to support. Um, so, um, you know, that, that for me, it's, those are some of those, um, those challenges that we've, we've, we've faced down. So with, with all your experience, Mighty, what is it that you think that Mighty brings to the table that um, helps it be so flexible and be able to attack these sorts of large projects so quickly? You know, it's really interesting. I, I wonder if we can find it and bottle it sometimes because it, it's, <laughs> it's in the DNA of Mighty and it's always been there. Uh, and I've been there 17 years, so not quite from the beginning, but a good many years within the business. And we've, we've always had this, that when a client shouts for help, whether that be that the building's been flooded or there's been a fire or they need to relocate or they've had an IT failing, um, we seem to be at our absolute best. Our teams seem to be able to just perform, you know, almost miracles, just incredible tasks. Um, I've always said that our staff, our frontline staff, will walk over hot coals and through walls for, for, for Mighty and uh, it's humbling, actually, to see what people will do um, uh, to support customers and, and to support the country in these times. We'll have seen it on our, our Twitter feeds and our LinkedIn feeds, but, you know, the sentiment around us being incredibly proud and wanting to thank our teams. It's not um, just words. It's, you know, it's not uh, for a sound bite. It, it, it is because we just don't know what else to say. Uh, it's, it's been incredible. So I think, I think that um, that is one key point. And then... And then the strength and depth of, of, of capability around skill set of our managers um, and our operators to be able to mobilise. Um, my team are fed up of me saying at pace, but to mobilise that, <laughs> um, uh, again, getting the job done. Uh, we weren't able to ask questions of people or, or, or nice to haves on this. We had to tell people to do something and go and do it and trust them on that. And I guess the last point for me on that would be 
you have to run with multiple work streams and get together at the end of the day. So right, you go off and do that today. You go off and deal with that today. So whether that be training, induction, equipment, chemicals, um, specification, that had to be done separate work streams, bring everybody back together at the end of the day to make sure we knew where everybody was. And then, you know, a rag, a rag status to make sure we were on point. Um, and that first week, um, those uh, evening calls were, were vital to know what we were doing the next morning. Yeah. Well, I, I think this pandemic is one thing that is um, showing that it's not just the military, police, um, fire, ambulance, um, doctors, nurses that are heroes, but it's also all of those that are supporting them as well. James, thank you very much indeed for giving your time up to speak to me this morning for the International Security Journal. You're welcome. Thank you very much. 